Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming. My name is Mike Samus. I'm a software developer at eMarketer, which is a, uh, marketing, a digital marketing research company uh, that provides uh, insights and trends related to digital marketing, media, commerce, and even more through the articles, interviews, charts, and reports that we publish on a daily basis. So today I'm here to discuss the topic of lazy loading images in React.js, which is a technique that we've introduced to a couple of our microsites at eMarketer. So first of all, what is lazy loading? Well, it's a programming practice where you only load or initialize an object when it is needed, as opposed to all the time. In React, instead of bulk loading all the content, content can be loaded only when the user accesses the part of the page that requires it. And this is mainly used to improve performance and decrease the size of the page. So let's actually take a look at a, a very simple example of uh, how lazy loading actually works. And this is just a quick little demo that I wrote. So we'll look at the source code. And as you can see, this is a, a very simple function of uh, thing being returned here. It's just three divs. Uh, the first div has a h1 tag of uh, scroll down. The last div has a scroll up h1 tag. And you'll notice that the middle div is uh, wrapped with this observer wrapper. Uh, we'll go over what's actually in the code for that in a bit. But just know that this is actually what's going to lazy load our, um, our component. So that's the, uh, the code. And you also notice that there's class names on each one, um, just a box, and then the box red for the middle one. Uh, the CSS for that is uh, very simple. It's just um, a width of 100%, a height of 100 pixels, and a display block. And I just put red on that middle one so that you can really see it when uh, I show you the demo. So I'm going to go to the page and show you what it looks like. And I just have the inspector open on Chrome as well. So as you can see, uh, this is assuming you hit the page for the first time, you would see our three divs are right here. And you'll see our scroll down div and our scroll up div at the bottom. But you'll notice that the middle div is actually empty. There's nothing in it. We don't see the uh, H1 text that I entered in there or the uh, class name. But watch what happens as I slowly scroll down this page. Um, just keep an eye on that div right there that's empty. So I'm going to scroll down slowly. And you see there's a change there. So the, right now, the div, instead of being empty, I can expand it and I see the div class box red. And if I expand that, I see the text that I entered. So this is just a very simple example of how uh, the concept of lazy loading really works. So um, at eMarketer, uh, I actually created a NPM package uh, which is called Simple React Intersection Observer. That's that observer wrapper that you saw wrapping that div that we just lazy loaded. So um, basically, we wanted to make a lazy loader into an open source NPM package at eMarketer that can be used not only in our other applications, but also we wanted to contribute to the open source community as well, uh, so any developer can use it. So some of the tools I used to create this was uh, React Intersection Observer. This is what's actually lazy loading a component when it enters a viewport, and it removes it when uh, the, the viewport's exited. And in addition, I used NWB Toolkit, which is used to create uh, React libraries and NPM modules. It makes it really easy to do that. I highly recommend it. So let's look at the source code that I wrote for the simple React intersection observer. And we can go over that together. So as you can see here, it's really not a lot of code, actually. Um, so we'll start off by looking at the constructor here. Here uh, we define a Boolean called this.useObserver. Let's double click on that. Uh, which is the logic for determining whether or not we should lazy load a component. Uh, the first condition is uh, global.server, which is just checking if we're server-side rendering or not. The second condition requires that the intersection observer web API be available in the global namespace uh, for, for the JavaScript and the browser. Uh, most browsers, such as uh, Chrome, Firefox, and Edge, are compatible with Intersection uh, Observer Web API. However, older versions of IE uh, don't fully support it without requiring a polyfill. In this case, though, I'm not going to be using a polyfill, and I'll explain why uh, in a bit. So let's now look at the uh, render method down here. So in the render method, uh, first, we check if we use we check the use observer boolean that we set in the constructor. So if we're not server side rendering or the intersection uh, observer web API is not available 
to the browser, we simply return the child component as is without lazy loading it. However, if these conditions are met, we return the observer component provided by the React intersection observer. Uh, we have a property set to that called trigger once, as you can see there, which I've set to true, meaning that this will only lazy load that component that's wrapped once when it enters the user view, and it won't disappear when you exit the view, like scrolling down and then back up the page. So uh, inside the observer component, I call the inView render function, as you can see, uh, where if the observer component is in the viewport, we display the child component, otherwise we return null and display nothing. So that's all the source code for the simple React intersection observer, which again is available open source. But you might be wondering why I didn't use the uh, polyfill in this case. So why not use intersection observer polyfill? Well, the first reason is that in service, when you're server-side rendering your content, your, object, your objective is to ensure that the user gets to the page as fast as possible, even if some of the items can't be interacted with yet. So in the case of server-side rendering, it doesn't make sense to use a polyfill since we want to defer loading some of the less important content in order to increase the speed of the page that's loading. And second, we aren't using uh, the full web API in the intersection observer uh, in this case. And when you use polyfills, it's all or nothing in terms of what you get. And uh, lastly, not using a polyfill will decrease the size of the page for older browsers that can't support it, which is better for performance overall. Now let's look at a real use case that we actually had at eMarketer. So at eMarketer, we had to create a homepage for all of our articles that we publish on a daily basis. Um, for each article, we wanted to display the article's title, a publication date, description, and a lead image. We also always uh, load the first four images without lazy loading since they're always going to be visible to the user initially. Uh, and then what we want to do with the rest of the images that show up on that page as that user scrolls down is that we lazy load the rest of them uh, as they enter the viewport as the user scrolls through the page. So let's look at a live demo using the simple React Intersection Observer. In, um, so I'm going to start off by showing what the articles page looks like that we built at eMarketer. So this is a page. As you can see, it's, it has a, a header on the top up here. There's a navigation on the left here, which controls the filtering of the articles that appear on the right. So as you can see, there's multiple articles here. Uh, some of them have images, some of them don't. And, uh, as you, and then if I were to click on an article, it'll actually load the full article where you'd see the, the full thing in detail with chart images and references and sources and whatnot. So let me go back here. So that's what our page actually looks like. Uh, but let's look at the code behind and see what's really going on with the lazy loading of the images. And then I'll show you a demo of it actually working. So I'm going to load the code here. Oh. So uh, we have an asset card component for each of the articles that you saw. In the render method here, I have a constant called card image. Uh, if the article this component receives has an image property, because some of them don't and some of them do in our case, uh, I will return an image, otherwise I'll return null. Uh, now in addition to having an image, I check if the article should be using the observer wrapper or not. Remember, for the use cases slide that I showed you, I mentioned that we don't want to lazy load the first four images uh, since uh, they'll be in the user's viewport as soon as the page loads. Therefore, if, we, um, if use observer wrapper is true, we will lazy load the article's image, otherwise we'll simply render the image as is. So let's now look at the code in action by going to the articles page again. And I'm just going to give it a hard refresh here. And I'm going to open up the inspector, go to the network tab, and we're going to slow this page down to uh, slow 3G. That way we can really see the lazy loading in action. So let me move this out of the way. So as I scroll through this page, watch the uh, images, and I'll try to point them out to uh, being lazy loaded. It might not happen on this page because I scrolled through it before. Oh, there's one. See that little box over there? Bam, it became an image. If I scroll a little more, that one should become one. And this guy, yep. So as you can see, the lazy loader is working. 
uh, we are loading these images later on rather than right when the page uh, renders immediately. So to summarize, uh, lazy loading images optimizes content delivery and streamlines the end user's uh, experience. And this allows users to connect to the content much faster since uh, only some of, the page is ne some of the page needs to be downloaded when first viewed. I actually read an interesting article uh, this morning that mentioned that most uh, websites have about 65% of the content is all images. So uh, being able to lazy load it where you have it just show up when you need it later on rather than right away can make a big difference in terms of your performance. So this is also great because it makes sure important content gets prioritized. So that actually concludes my presentation. So as I mentioned before, uh, the simple React Intersection Observer, that's the NPM package link and a GitHub repo for it. I've also included my contact information there as well. And uh, lastly, I did want to mention that eMarketer is hiring and we're always looking for very talented uh, developers, front end, full stack. Um, so you can either go to the eMarketer.com slash about slash careers, or you can speak to myself or two other eMarketer employees that are here as well. So uh, thank you so much for uh, attending. And at this time, I can uh, take any questions if there are any. Hey, uh, hey. That, that was a great talk. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Um, so uh, before deciding to go about building this project, were any other alternatives uh, considered uh, for, for lazy, to, lazy loading images or content in general? Or was this just something that was simple enough to um, utilize since, uh, since there were some pre-existing uh, just to kind of help make this um, a reality. So just wondering. It's a great question, yeah. Um, when we first started, uh, we were just looking for something like out of the box that would work, like you said. We were just you know, browsing NPM packages and whatnot, uh, simple Google search. Uh, that's how we found the uh, React Intersection Observer. Uh, what we, we wanted to use that, and what I did in addition to it is I wanted to make it into like a wrapper component where we can just we can have like kind of our own rules to it. Like we didn't want to use the polyfill, for instance, because we just felt that that was unnecessary for our use case. Um, so on, yeah, to answer your question, uh, we there were out of the box solutions that kind of worked, and then this was just kind of like an enhancement to that. That's why all we really did for the npm package, we just added simple to it, just to make it <laughs> easier for uh, people to use and just like pick up right away. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Um, so this seems like something that would be super useful for people on a restricted, say, data plan, like mobile device. Has there been any idea to convert this to something that would work for React Native? Um, that's a great point, actually. Yeah, we, we don't really use a lot of uh, React Native like with this project that I was working on here. But it definitely, like, uh, like I said in the previous slide, like important content can get prioritized. So like for a mobile experience, for instance, there may be times where you don't want those images or um, any other components that might not be necessary to load up right away until the user actually physically scrolls to it or hits some button to trigger it. So um, yeah, that's definitely a, a valid uh, use case for it. Thank you so much. Great, thank you.